Thank you all for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, we're going to be sharing a lot of information about the upcoming Welcoming Interactive and um, invite you to um, just kind of sit back, take in all this information. Um, we'll give you some housekeeping points here in a moment, but uh, before we get started officially, just introducing myself, uh, I'm Anthony Salas. I'm the Senior Manager of Events and Membership with Welcoming America. And I'm going to be joined today um, by a couple of individuals here shortly. Um, Alex Manuel, who is the Managing Consultant with Students Rebuild, and Megan Gonzalez, who is the Event and Membership Coordinator with Welcoming America. And again, you're going to hear from both of them um, here in just a moment. But before we officially kick in, um, just want to share the information that we're going to go over with you today. Uh, you see the different points there on the screen now. There's a lot that's going to be going on over the three days of the interactive in a few weeks there. And so we want to just try to give you a good sense as to what to expect uh, and highlight some things that we hope you'll be excited about and be looking forward to as well. Um, at any point during this presentation today, um, let us know. Um, if you have any questions, you can use the chat area or you can use the Q&A function. Um, and then also, um, just in general, if you've got any tech questions or anything, if you if the platform isn't working properly, let us know as well. So to kick off, um, you probably kind of know some of this, but just wanted to kind of share some visuals with everyone as to um, where we're going to be. So as you know, uh, we're going to be at the uh, Signia by Hilton in San Jose. Um, and the main dates of the conference are April 26th through the 28th, so coming up here pretty quickly. Um, this is an image here of the exterior of the hotel. So again, just wanted to give everyone some visuals so you can be prepared when you arrive. Um, on the next screen here, just want to share too, <clears throat> what will kind of your experience be when you walk in? So this is literally a, a, a shot of um, the entrance to the hotel from the exterior lobby uh, walking in there. And I kind of pointed out a couple of things uh, that might help you. Um, so as you walk in, you see at the end of the um, photo there, that is the lobby bar. You kind of go around to the right, you'll go right into the hotel check-in area. And then uh, to get to the um, event itself where we're gonna be, um, we're gonna be up on the second floor of the hotel. So you can access that uh, right at the main entrance from uh, escalators that are on either side of the main entrance, or you can also access it from your guest elevator. So you know, if you're in your guest room, you're coming down for the start of the day, you can select floor two and you'll be right in the space. Um, we are not gonna be on any other floors or any other locations within that venue. It's all on one floor, which I think is gonna be a really nice uh, thing for everyone to experience there. Uh, a couple of the things I wanted to point out too, uh, in terms of just food and beverage and things of that sort that are offered, depending on when you're arriving. So um, we will be providing breakfast um, and lunch on Thursday, um, as that is kind of the main full day of the conference. Uh, Friday, we will be providing breakfast. And um, we will not be providing lunch because this, the event will be ending right after the morning sessions, uh, right around 11.45. Um, if you want or need um, options, there are several um, in, within the hotel itself. So there is a restaurant uh, called The Fountain in the hotel lobby. Uh, it's a breakfast restaurant open from 6.30 to 10.30. Um, so if again, if you're arriving Tuesday or Wednesday, um, you've got some options there. Um, there's also a really great other hotel or other restaurant in the hotel called The Grill. Um, that's a great option for lunch or dinner. Uh, it's open pretty much full day. And again, there's several uh, other restaurants, cafes, coffee bars, things right around the hotel that you can kind of get out and explore a little bit there. Um, but just wanted to kind of give you an idea of that. The hotel also has several amenities. They've got uh, a rooftop pool. They have an exercise room. Um, several different locations that you can meet. The lobby has lots of different meeting kind of coves and locations where you can gather with your coworkers or your co-attendees. And um, yeah, so it's going to be a really great hotel. I think uh, everyone's going to really enjoy this here. Um, as I mentioned, this is pretty much all on one floor, the second floor of the, uh, the venue. 
And um, this floor plan here is also on the website, and it's also going to be on the app, which we're going to talk about here in a bit. Um, but again, this kind of gives you an idea of the floor layout and all of the rooms that will be used there. Um, the Imperial Ballroom is where the main um, plenary sessions will occur. So the breakfast and lunch sessions will be in that ballroom. And then all the other ones are the different breakout rooms that will be used over the uh, the three days there. So outside of that, you know, we've got a couple of receptions that will be happening as well. And the first one will be um, on Wednesday, the 26th as well. This will be our opening reception. This is going to take place at the San Jose City Hall Rotunda, and it's going to be from 6 to 7.30 on that Wednesday. Um, this is a, obviously you can see here, a very unique, very cool uh, venue. So we're really grateful that the city has allowed us to use this space for the reception here. Um, it is walkable from the Signia. It's about a five block walk. So if you're able to do that, uh, we'll have volunteers outside of the, um, the main lobby at the Signia to kind of guide you as to how to get there. It's pretty much a straight shot um, and just walking those five blocks. Um, if you are unable to or would rather not walk, the city again has graciously provided a couple of their vehicles that will be um, touring back and forth between the two locations between 5.30 and 8 o'clock. So if you'd rather uh, take that one of those shuttles that'll be going back and forth, uh, you can again either catch that at the Signia or um, at the Rotunda to bring you back as well. And then on Thursday evening, um, you're going to have a full day on Thursday. Uh, we're starting bright and early um, all the way through the end of the day around five o'clock. Um, and then we're going to have the reception on Thursday evening um, from 6 to 745. That's going to be at the Tech Interactive, which is literally across the park from the Signia. So it's an extremely short walk right across there. Um, this is going to be, I think, a very fun reception for everyone. Uh, the Tech Interactive is exactly that. It's interactive. There are exhibits that um, in the area where we're going to be hosting the reception, you are invited to interact with, to um, kind of challenge uh, co-attendees with. We'll have some of the museum staff there to kind of talk to you about the exhibits and things of that sort. So um, we hope to see you there because I think this one is going to be a lot of fun for everyone. So how to get there. Um, if this is your first time coming to the San Jose area, um, if you're coming in by air, um, the airport does have uh, a lot of options there. There are rideshare options, the Uber, Lyft options, and there's a map. Again, this is also on the website under the FAQ page. Um, there are taxis there. This is a really short ride from the airport to the hotel. It's 10 to 15 minutes at the most. So uh, it's a fairly short trip. And then if you are by chance driving, um, there are uh, options there. The uh, Signia does have valet parking for $26 a night, um, but there are also several garages and um, lots all around the area there that you can get to. Um, you can also go to Park SJ, uh, which is hyperlinked, and again, also on the website, and uh, you can look for spots there if you need that. So a lot of information already coming at you there. Um, but now it is my pleasure to turn things over to uh, Alex Manuel uh, from Students Rebuild. She is going to share some information with you about the Students Rebuild program and then also feature a little bit of a preview as to the art project that we're going to have on site at the, uh, the event there. So Alex, I'll let you take it from here. Great. Let me just bring up slides. Can everybody see them? Are we good? Excellent. So I'm Alex Manuel. Um, I'm a managing consultant with Students Rebuild, which is a partner uh, with Welcoming America. We're really thrilled um, to be partnering together to um, uh, put on an interactive art uh, project uh, at the Welcoming um, Interactive event. And you might say, well, what does that actually um, mean or look like? Um, and so what we do um, all over the world, I'll tell you a little bit about um, Students Rebuild, is that um, we encourage young people and community members um, to make art around global needs. And this year we're focusing on the um, Welcoming Refugees Project with Welcoming America being a partner um, in that work. 
Um, every um, piece of art, um, the uh, foundation, the Bezos Family Foundation donates $5 toward um, organizations that are doing great work um, around welcoming refugees um, around the world. And so uh, we want to bring that to the Welcoming uh, Interactive and give you the opportunity to um, be able to uh, make a welcoming postcard for communities. Um, and we will also um, be giving away um, uh, items to uh, bring uh, this type of uh, art project to your community if you'd like to start an event um, or something like that. Uh, want to share again that Students Rebuild, um, our, our focus is around young people and we're so excited to bring this um, and connect it to um, the work of Welcoming America. Welcoming America is a partner. And as you know, um, a huge uh, impact of uh, refugee crisis and, and is, is that over 400 million um, it, uh, folks that are being displaced, 400,000, I'm sorry, are children. And so we have really um, work in partnership with all of you to think about as, um, as we uh, see folks come to the United States that they feel welcomed and connected to their communities. Um, so I wanna show a quick video um, that just shares a little bit more about our partners. And then um, I will show you what to look for for the project as we uh, head into the San Jose event. What does home look like to you? For many, it's where you grew up and created memories. Now, imagine losing the only home you've ever known. That's a reality for over 400 million young people around the world that had to flee their homes because of conflict. We're Students Rebuild, and our mission with this year's Welcoming Refugees Project is to help refugees feel loved and welcome in their new communities. This is where you come in. We're asking you and students all over the world to design a postcard that welcomes refugees into your community. For every postcard students create, the Bezos Family Foundation will donate $5 to refugee aid organizations. UNICEF is creating an unprecedented support system for the world's children. Choose Love gives refugees everything from life-saving search and rescue boats to food and legal advice. Welcoming America inspires people to build more open communities. World Savvy helps classrooms be more inclusive and engaging. We're also following Little Amal, the giant puppet of a 10-year-old Syrian refugee girl, on her journey visiting communities like yours around the globe. No matter what we believe, where we live, or who we are, we are all part of one global community. Everyone is welcome. Get started on your adventure today at studentsrebuild.org. That's a little bit more about us. If you're interested and want to bring a project um, to your community, um, look us up online. And uh, we are um, through the uh, end of June, um, through actually um, International Refugee Day, we're um, doing, uh, anyone can create a team and uh, work with young people, work with community members um, to make art. Um, around this global need. We'll be bringing this, um, like I said, to, uh, to the uh, welcoming interactive and we're really looking forward to that. Um, we also want you to know that you can run an event in your local community or even just um, uh, participate. Here's some examples of some of the postcards that have been made um, to, to welcome folks. And we also encourage you to, to distribute them, whether that's to community organizations, refugee resettlement organizations, um, immigrant community organizations, which all of you are, are a part of. Um, we want to uh, get you excited about this kind of uh, art project. We'll be actually um, working with a local artist from San Jose uh, to uh, put together um, kind of the large uh, art piece that, uh, so what folks will be doing is individually making postcards and what you see on the screen is the kind of big picture. So all the postcards will end up in a really large um, art uh, uh, display kind of filling in aspects of the bush and, and flowers to really showcase um, community. The artists will actually be there on site um, during the uh, interactive um, event. And um, if you see in this um, kind of side corner here, 
uh, you'll be looking for kind of an area with lots of windows um, where you'll see the giant piece of art that they'll be putting together. So our, I, um, if you have attended in the past the Welcoming Interactive, um, they uh, last year did a, a project where they had um, folks uh, create art on feathers and then put it together as a larger picture. And our hope is that um, in creating this project and um, featuring welcoming postcards, that these will then um, be something that can be kept and 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 uh, utilized as art within the San Jose community. So we're really excited about that, um, and we look forward to uh, getting to connect with all of you and sharing more about Students Rebuild. And uh, look for us; uh, we'll be there all um, all of the days. And the artist um, who uh, is putting the large scale picture together will also be there. Um, and so uh, we look forward to being able to display this art in San Jose uh, long after the conference as well. So uh, I'll turn it back to all of you, uh, or to you, Anthony. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon in San Jose. Awesome. Thanks so much, Alex. I uh, appreciate you sharing all of that. Um, quick note to everyone, if you have any questions right now for Alex, um, feel free to use the chat or the Q&A section. She is uh, going to have to unfortunately leave the webinar here shortly, so I want to make sure that uh, she gets a chance to address any questions that you may have. Um, but we are definitely excited about this project. Um, as Alex shared, um, this is something that the image that you saw of the hummingbird um, kind of moving into the bush and flowers uh, is the concept that our local artists that we're working with came up with. Uh, there's real significance to the meaning uh, of the hummingbird, and all of that will be um, shared on site there. So you'll kind of really understand um, kind of the meaning of, of that and how it ties into the postcards that hopefully all of you will be sharing and adding to this. Um, they will be again at the Signia. Um, this will be there um, on Thursday and Friday. So we highly encourage you to please stop by and uh, engage with them, talk to them about Students Rebuild, but also take a moment to create your postcard and add it to, to the art piece. This will be staying with the city of San Jose after the conference, and uh, it will be at a location that we're still trying to determine where it's gonna be, but it will be in a, in a place that will um, be a place that people will see it and will feel welcome. Like uh, Alex said, this is kind of the, the main focus of this project. And so being able to leave that behind is going to be, uh, I think, really meaningful. Um, Alex, I want to see, I think we've got um, some comments really quickly. So it does look like someone is interested in learning more about the, the postcard project. So uh, we'll make sure you get that information there. Um, yeah, absolutely. A couple of them. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to just talk a little bit more about that again, because um, we've had several in here that said they want to learn more. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I will put in the um, chat. You can go um, so you can go online and uh, you can uh, absolutely learn more about this. Um, anyone in any community can create a team um, with just uh, all all the changes with uh COVID, like we try to make it as accessible as possible. So you can go online, you can register um, a team, you can, uh, you know, come up with your uh, best team name and who who you'd like to, to work with. If we have templates and we have um, all sorts of kind of curriculum information to share um, with with you, an art guide, a leadership guide for um, how, how to do this um, in your community. Um, and you can also digitally um, upload uh, uh, the the art as well. And we encourage you to feature these locally in your community. I think we've seen um, and we've what we've seen with uh, our folks that are participating this year is many times they want to donate or they want to give these postcards to um, community organizations um, that are working with immigrants and refugees. Um, and uh, we, we think that's wonderful. Um, and we also um, see uh, co local communities using them as uh, like art projects or um, ways to kind of create more visibility. What we'll be doing in San Jose is we'll be kind of showing you an example of what this looks like, like how you might, uh, in terms of all of the folks that are participating in the conference, um, have the opportunity to kind of make one and go through the process of making the art with us. 
And then, uh, but certainly um, you can do this in your community. We'll also be um, giving away lots of swag and, 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 and things to, um, to, to consider uh, holding an event or uh, uh, different types of ways to bring this to your local community. And, and then the question, does it have to be for refugees only? We, uh, it, it certainly does not, um, both for the creation of um, art, we want everyone to be creating art and for the purposes of kind of focus, we, uh, we kind of speak about refugees as both immigrant refugees, those that are you know, seeking um, uh, uh, support or moving to a new location. And so um, we, we wanna think about that in the broadest sense um, to really think about the, the work that all of you are doing in terms of welcoming um, the large, new, new members into the community. I just want to double check if there are other questions I can answer. The website has lots of really good um, information, uh, and we are really excited to share um, share this with you. We'll have lots more to, um, and I put that in the chat. Um, we'll have more to share with you at the actual conference, and you can come talk to us anytime. Um, we'll give you our best um, uh, thinking um, about you know, uh, what different kinds, if you did an event in a local community, what it might look like um, and uh, what kinds of uh, ideas or supports are, are, are there. Um, we'll also uh, be, uh, you can also go online in, in the meantime and look, uh, we have a really great map of where teams have already um, submitted art all over the world. And um, you can, uh, scroll down and kind of see more information about um, uh, what kind of art's been submitted and, and learn about some of the different um, people that have submitted uh, art around the world. And we'll definitely, um, as I wrote in the chat too, um, this is being recorded and we'll be sharing it with you all in the next few days. As part of that, I'll make sure that the, uh, the link that Alex shared is included in that email. Um, so those of you that have expressed interest in this can have access to that as well in, in that email. All right. Alex, any, any other closing comments? <laughs> Just that we are so excited that you're interested in this. We hope you bring it to your local communities. Um, I think we will be uh, doing many of these kind of interactive art events into um, in, throughout uh, the rest of the year. And um, we're excited to really spend time um, with you at the Welcoming um, America Welcoming Interactive event and uh, uh, happy to follow up and answer any questions that, that folks have. Um, and so if, if something comes to you while well, I'm, I'm gonna have to jump off, um, I will be happy to respond to Anthony um, and, uh, and, and make sure that you have the information you need. All right. Well, thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. And I'm glad you were able to, to join us and share this. Uh, it's definitely going to be one of the highlights of the conference. So thanks so much for, for sharing this. Um, all right. Thanks for having me. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the sharing. There we go. And we're going to jump into some other information. And the next piece that we're going to share is about um, some other options going on for you, uh, which is the film screening and um, what you all are already starting to ask about in the chat, uh, community tours. You're gonna hear all about that here shortly. Um, but I wanna start with uh, the film screening. And um, this year, what we're doing is, this is gonna be done um, around the same time as the community tours that will be happening on Wednesday. Um, this is a uh, documentary film uh, that we are going to be featuring called From Here, uh, and it's a film by Christina Antonakas Wallace. And this has been a documentary that has already been screened at uh, film festivals all across the globe. Um, it's won numerous awards, such as Best Feature Film uh, from the New York Human Rights Film Festival, and Best Feature Documentary from uh, the Oklahoma Cine Latino Film Festival and Bowdoin Film Festival. Um, we're really honored and excited that Christina approached us uh, to feature this at the Interactive and, uh, and to bring this to you as, a, as an opportunity. 
Um, just a little bit about the, the film, if you're not familiar with it. Um, what this film does is it follows four artists who are uh, also activists, and they're based in either Berlin and, or New York. Um, and we get their four distinct visions of resistance, of resilience, um, and their struggle um, that they're going through um, because of the balance of immigration uh, and integration debates that are going on uh, with them at the time that they're featured in this film. So um, again, we hope you can consider um, this as an option. We know the tours are something that everyone really wants to be a part of, but if for some reason you're not able to get into one of the tours, please join us at this. Uh, it's gonna be happening again on that Wednesday, April 26th, starting at two o'clock. Um, again, on that second floor, uh, it's gonna be in the Crystal Meeting Room at the Signia. And um, also, uh, Christina, who is the director and producer of the film, will be there live. Uh, and we're going to do a Q&A after the film screening. And um, I believe she's also working to get one of the um, individuals featured in the film to join um, via Zoom. So it'll definitely be a great Q&A at the end of that. So um, you will receive an email next week to let you know when this is available to sign up for. Um, and we're, we're going to give you all the details on how to do all of that here shortly. Um, but again, please consider this as an option. So um, now I'm going to turn it over to the thing everyone wants to know about. And Megan, you've got the, you've got the highlight here. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Megan Gonzalez, my amazing coworker. Um, she's been my right hand putting all of this together, and I'm very grateful for her. So I'm going to let her share all of the information about the tours. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony. Um, so again, my name is Megan Gonzalez. I am the events and membership coordinator with the Welcoming America. So um, I know I've been communicating with some of y'all throughout, uh, you know, getting ready for the interactive. So I'm going to be talking about the tours. Um, move to the next slide, Anthony. Thank you. Awesome. So the tours, so these will take place on Wednesday, April 26th from 12 to 4 p.m. And the purpose is really to visit and explore the host city. So each time, um, for those of you who are new to the interactive, um, the tours really kind of get you situated in where you are going to. So San Jose has been great to work with and they've helped us organize five tours. Um, there is going to be one walking tour and then four tours by bus. Um, there is, like Anthony said, there's the alternative option as well, which is to see the documentary. We'll talk about this in a minute, um, or I guess right now, actually. So the tours are limited in occupancy. And um, so that's just something to be aware of as well. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Great, so the tours, there are five again. So I'll go over just some brief descriptions that we have of these tours. And the first one is titled The Alameda to Open San Jose, Creating a Path to Connections and Collaborations. So this tour weaves a path through communities and teams that made and are making history by opening San Jose to innovation through dialogue, storytelling, and engagement. Um, this one has, you know, a his big history component and then also some interactive uh, arts components as well to it. The next one is recognizing and supporting immigrant identity and contributions. So this tour provides a glimpse into the Vietnamese American community, which is the largest of Vietnamese origin outside of Vietnam and in, in San Jose. And then the second segment offers immersive experiences into the history of the communities that settled San Jose and the journey to becoming an innovation center. So again, a lot here around diversity um, and also history in this tour. The next one is the walking tour that we mentioned earlier. So this one will, you will start at the Signia and the entire one, um, you'll end at the Adobe um, facility. So the, um, the headquarters. So this walking tour stops at the San Jose Museum of art to hear about its longstanding community friendly programs and partnerships. And then uh, the Adobe Founders Tower where they'll experience the journey of how Adobe has become a household name through the, its creative suite of products such as Adobe Acrobat, Illustrator and Photoshop. So again, um, 
kind of tech, arts, creativity in this tour. And this one you do have to walk, so just be aware of that um, as you if you're going to sign up for this tour. Uh, the next one is, let's see, the fourth one. This is Lessons of Inclusion Through Historic Evolution. So this one is in San Jose's Japantown. And this one, it is a, again, all the, most of these tours take buses to the locations, but this one will take the bus to Japantown. And then once you get there, it is pretty much entirely walking as well. So that's another thing. I guess all of the tours, actually, you will be walking to different places. Um, so please be aware of that. Uh, and make sure to wear comfy walking shoes. Um, but anyway, so this is a ride to and then walk tour and more immersed in a 135 year history and continuing culture of San Jose's Japantown. So starting off as a refuge for Chinese immigrants, the area attracted other communities when it was redlined, continuing to its diverse business and residential nature today. And then the last tour is the Cisepuede East San Jose tour. And it's a collaborative tour led by Cisepuede, which means yes, we can. Um, so the Cisa Puede Collective, and it includes a neighborhood drive with tour guides and then stops at Vegilution Farm, uh, Somos Mayfair, and the School of Arts and Culture at the Mexican Heritage Plaza. So those are the five tours. And then um, as you see here, this is information on how to register. Like I said, um, the tours do usually, um, if you're familiar with this in the past, they fill up very quickly. And each tour only has 30 spots. So um, we, you'll receive an email by the end of next week when tours are open. We still aren't sure which day um, it's going to launch. But as soon as it launches, you will receive an email notification um, directly to you. And so you'll go to the link and be able to register for the tour there. Um, again, they fill up quickly. And it is kind of first come, first serve. So just keep your eye out next week. Um, uh, to ex and you can see when to expect the tours to be open. <clears throat> and then you can register with your phone, so with the Cvent app. Um, hopefully all of you have downloaded that. I know Anthony is going to go over that in a second, but you can register through the Cvent app, so on your phone, or there's also a way to register um, on the event website, which will give you access or will give you instructions on how to do that too. I think we'll be sending that out Friday, just information on how to access the app or website. So depending on what way you want to register, but um, I know Anthony will go over that in a minute. So that is a really brief description of the tours. Again, I know that these are pretty popular in the past um, and the spots are limited. So um, just be aware of that. And um, again, the alternative to this is the documentary, which will take place the same day at 2 p.m. But I think that's it for the tours, Anthony. I will turn it back to you. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, and I guess we could answer them now too, if you see any in the chat right now, Anthony. Yep, thanks, Megan. A um, Couple of things just to note too, um, following up on a, a chat that was in, or a question in the chat, um, going back to the film. Um, unfortunately, the documentary film is only screening that one time. Um, so it's not going to be uh, shown at any other points during the interactive. However, one thing I did not mention is um, they will be an exhibitor also at uh, the interactive. So um, please stop by and talk to them. They may be able to give you information on how you can access it or uh, when it might be screening in another way. So please definitely uh, stop by and visit with them. Um, so let's see, I'm going to just back up before we move forward. You see some is... questions in yep. there, Anthony. Yep. Um, so it looks like there is a question uh, first about water. Thank you for bringing that up. We encourage people to bring their own um, reusable water bottles, but we will have some water bottles um, on the bus just in case. Again, we strongly encourage you to, to use your own reusable water bottle, though. Um, the time for the tours are from 12 to 4 p.m. Um, 12 is really when you check in. Again, if you re when you register next week, you will get all this information um, in another separate email as well, but they'll be from 12 p.m. and then they go till 4 p.m. Um, so make sure you eat lunch before the tour if you, if you um, are able to get on the tour list. Um, let's see. 
Another thing too, um, it looks like someone in there was was discussing that they uh, they didn't get the email. Um, these emails do go through when you registered. Um, the website host is Cvent, and so they'll, it'll all be sent through Cvent. I do encourage you to look through your spam or if you have um, folders that you have set up in your in your email. I know I've gotten some responses from individuals who have said they didn't see these emails. Um, so if you are registered, you should be getting them, but we'll double check with you on your email address. Again, reach out. Thank you for putting that in there. Um, we'll make sure that your email is on that list and let us know if you're not receiving these emails um, from us or from Cvent. And like Megan said, on Friday of this week, um, you will get an email from us. Again, it will be through the Cvent app um, and it will go to everyone that is registered for the interactive. Um, it is going to be specifically about um, the mobile app and the uh, desktop website uh, that you can also interact with as well. Um, it's gonna have the links to both of those as part of a follow-up to this webinar. It'll also be on the um, email announcement that will go out next week about the tours and when, the, when you can register, we'll include the links on how to do that there as well. Um, but um, I think what we're gonna do now is move into the next part, which we're gonna get into the app and the website, um, but keep your questions coming in the chat. Um, we're both here, we're watching things. Um, and let's see here, will there be website access for the whole event? My phone is not compatible. Sorry, my view just changed. Uh, I'm not so yes, yeah, so there will be, um, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do a live uh, demonstration of both the app and the website here shortly, um, so you can interact with both. Because I know some people aren't comfortable with the app or are using their mobile devices or just don't want to, and that's perfectly fine. We're gonna show you how you can also uh, access everything through um, through the website as well. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the app. So as part of your registration confirmation email that you should have received, um, a few things on there, and I invite you to, if you didn't really look at it, go back and look at this again. Um, one thing that is uh, gonna be very helpful if you can keep that email, the QR code that um, is on there is your unique registration code. And we're encouraging everyone to keep that email because when you go to check in on site, um, if you have that available, pull it up. Uh, we're going to have some iPad stations where some of them will be set to the QR scanner. And all you'll need to do is hold your QR code up to the scanner, your badge will print, and you're done. Um, if you don't have your QR code, it's fine. We'll have a couple of other iPads that will be set up that are searchable by name. So you'll be able to go to one of those put your name in and you'll still be able to, to get in and, and check in that way. So, but again, the QR code just kind of helps get you through the process a little bit faster. Also on that registration confirmation um, toward the bottom is information about the attendee hub, which is the name of the app um, that we're using. And as Megan said, this is the website and the uh, app is all through Cvent, which is the platform that we're using. So if you want to go through uh, and get this set up, Again, we encourage everyone to, if you're comfortable with it, use your mobile device and do this. You will need to download uh, the app from either your Apple Store or the Google Play Store, depending on your device. Um, the images there on this screen are, uh, the one on the left is what you'll look for if, it's, if you're on Apple. The one on the right is what you'll look for if you're on uh, an Android. Um, and then once you have downloaded that to your device, um, open it and then there will be a search function in there and you're going to put in welcoming interactive and then you will see it come up on your device. And again, I'm going to display this here shortly. Um, why use the, the mobile app, right? So one of the things that we're trying to do is, you know, it's a great way for us to kind of be eco-friendly as opposed to having, you know, printouts of the agendas and all of the different information. This is a great way to kind of, you know, work through that. Um, when you get into the app, um, I would say the first thing you're going to want to do is set up your profile. Um, you can, you don't have to, but you can put a photo, you can, you know, your name, your organization, your job title, all the information that's there, you can put in as much or as little as you would like to. 
Um, but once you've done that, you can communicate with other attendees. You'll be able to see everyone that's already in there as well. Um, one feature that I think a lot of people have liked in years past is that you can build out your custom agenda. And again, I'm going to show you how that happens here in a moment. Um, but that's really a nice way to kind of pinpoint the sessions that you want to make sure to attend. Um, we'll also be sending out real-time notifications about things like the receptions and such. So if you've got that set up uh, on the app, make sure that you turn on the notifications so you'll get those. You'll see all of the session speakers. You can go to the sponsor pages, the exhibitor pages. Um, and then this year, different from last, we uh, have some fun interactive challenges where you can get points. Um, you can see how you're doing. Um, unfortunately, there's no prizes, but it's just a fun way to kind of engage on the app and, and have some fun with your other attendees. So wish me luck here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen quickly here for a moment um, because I'm going to pull up a different screen and um, hope that this works here. So give me just a quick second. And what we're going to do is go into a live preview of the app. All right, so um, what this is gonna be showing you again is exactly what the view will be like. So um, this is a view through uh, an Apple device here that you're seeing. We're gonna give it a couple of seconds because it's a little slow. All right, so once you're in there, um, you'll see the Cvent logo here and uh, you're gonna do that search for Welcoming Interactive. When you see that, uh, you'll select it, and then that will be the event that will be displayed. And let's try that one more time. Um, I'm really hoping this works. Uh, so the interactive information should come up here. It's not going to behave for me here. We're going to try it one more time. And if not, I'm going to go back to the slide view. The fun of a live attempt. <laughs> I'm going to try it one more time and I'm going to move on. If not, there we go. All right, we got to go. All right, so it's looking for the event. You see the interactive logo come up here. And this is the home screen of the app. And again, this is in the um, uh, Apple view. So at the top, we are literally 20 days away from the interactive. Um, along the top here, you've got some um, items that you can just select from across the top. You can uh, select on the agenda, the speakers. You can see other attendees. You can see sponsors and exhibitors there. Um, I'm going to go through these just really quickly. So as I said, one thing you can do is you can view the full agenda and under the tab that says all sessions, um, you'll see everything that is available. Um, a lot of these like the check-in, the plenaries, the receptions are already uh, added to your schedule. Um, but for those of you that want to create your own breakout session agenda, what you can do is scroll through and when you select the session that you want to attend, so let's say this one, fostering and maintaining welcoming in K through 12 schools, you wanna attend that one. All you're gonna do is click on the um, plus sign right here. And we're gonna to need to log in here really quickly. Um, it will add your information to that session and it will consider you as registered. So um, one thing to note is you do not have to register for the sessions. Um, I know someone had asked about that as well. And I want to, again, make that very clear that it's not required that you do that. But again, if you want to be able to kind of really um, make sure that you've got that information all set, um, you can do that. And uh, it just makes it easier for you to look at your um, uh, your agenda and know which sessions you uh, intend to go to and um, you can kind of follow and make sure you're getting into those. So again, um, I added that one. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on my schedule and um, on there, 
you see I've added the session. Well, this is hard for me to hear. So you see it added there as it's scrolling down. It's on there. Um, this is by day. So you've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And again, whatever you add to that, you'll be able to see directly in that section there. All right. And again, here you can click on and look at all of the speakers that are um, going to be present at the event. Um, you can click on any one of them. You can see their photo and then um, their information, their bio, as well as the session that they are going to be speaking at. So if you'd like to review that, you can. Um, again, you can see your fellow attendees, everyone that's there. If you want to connect with anyone, uh, you can click on their particular entry there. And again, sponsors, uh, if you want to visit any of the sponsor sites, you can do that as well as our exhibitors uh, and go to their locations as well. So those are the main things along the top of the homepage. You can also access these along the bottom. So here you've got the agenda like we looked at earlier. And there you can see that session that I chose and added to my schedule. Again, you can see the attendees. And also, um, this is where you will click to add your profile. And as I said earlier, strongly encourage you to do that. Um, you would just click uh, pro view profile and you can add again your photo as much or as little as you would like to, you can add it there. Um, in terms of the notifications that I mentioned as well, make sure um, that you go to your settings and uh, that you've turned on the notifications. I already have it on on mine, so that's why it's not showing here, but you'll see that option come up. Um, and then additional options will come up here. Um, I mentioned earlier too, the floor plan is on the, on the app, so you can see the floor plan here. And I mentioned also the Game Center. That will go live uh, on that Wednesday, and you'll be able to click that and see the different things that it will ask you to do in order to engage in that. So that is the app. If you don't want to use the app, you don't want to download it, you won't, don't want to do that, um, there is another alternative, and that is the website. So this will be, and again, we'll share the link to this website um, on Friday. And so this is where you can do everything that I just did on the app, but instead on the website here. So you'll see all of your information here. Um, you can also then click to the schedule. And again, just as we did, this is where you can select uh, any session that you want to go to. You'll just click add, click on it, and it will add it and create your personal agenda, which you can come right up here and click there and see um, the, the uh, sessions that you have chosen there. Again, the community, you can see your attendees. Um, the game, the networking, and then the expo hall, um, which is the exhibitors and sponsor information there. I want to clarify again, it is not required that you um, register for sessions. Um, it's just more of a way to kind of help you keep track of the sessions that you want to attend. That being said, though, the tours and the film screening um, you will need to register. So again, by the end of next week, we will be sending out an email with the uh, information for all of the tours and the film screening and how to, um, to get signed up for those. So all of that will be clearly marked out in the email that we'll be putting together. So when you get the email this Friday that has the link to the app and the uh, website link here, Again, strongly encourage you to select which one of those you want to use and go ahead and go in there and get your profile set up, get all the information ready to go. So that way, when you get that email next week to register for the tours or the film screening, you can go right into uh, either the app or the website and, and sign up and you're good to go. All right, I'm gonna stop here for a second. Let's see if there are any questions here. Okay, I believe I, I did talk about how to reserve a spot in a session. Uh, if I need to clarify that a little bit more, let me know. I'm happy to do that. Um, again, the app's name is Cbent, and uh, that's what you're going to look for initially from either the um, iOS or the Google Play Store. Um, and then once you've got that in there, 
uh, and downloaded, then you're going to look for Welcoming Interactive. And let's see here. And I think we covered the website, so I think we got it. Um, keep your questions coming, though. Uh, we're going to keep going on here for a moment, and um, we'll open up some actual uh, Q&A time here at the very end. But now let's move on to just a few other things before we move to Q&A. Um, a couple of these things were covered. Um, again, on the main website, if you go to welcominginteractive.org, um, along the top of the website, there are various tabs that you can click on, and one of those is FAQ. And so I strongly encourage you to look through those. Uh, it may answer some other questions that you might have. Um, it also details like when and how to check in for the event. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, keep that QR code handy if you can. Um, registration will officially open, I will share, on Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock. Uh, and again, we're on that second floor, and you'll see the, some signage to kind of get you to where the check-in area is located. Um, so again, Wednesday morning, 8 o'clock, uh, registration will open. Um, those of you that might need access to a prayer room or uh, nursing mother's rooms, um, you can go to the Welcoming America table, uh, and we will have access to those. Um, they will be private, um, so it'll be basically one person at a time to get access to it. Um, so we'll be able to provide you with the, the keys and the entries to that as needed. Dress code, as Megan mentioned, definitely wear comfortable shoes, um, not only for the tours, you're going to be doing some walking there, but you'll be doing a lot of moving around during the conference. So um, be comfortable. Um, usually dress code overall is like business casual, but again, we want you to be comfortable. So please do whatever you are most comfortable with. And then in terms of weather, um, you know, go to the various websites, check the weather, make sure, you know, you're bringing the appropriate layers of clothing. Um, it tends to be a little bit cool in the evening, sometimes during the day. So I would definitely encourage you to bring that um, something that can kind of keep you warm. Also, session rooms, sometimes it's hard to regulate temperatures. Sometimes they're a little chilly. So just bring some layers to keep yourself warm. And as mentioned, and Megan mentioned, um, if you have a water bottle, bring it along with you. Um, you know, you can use that on the tours. You can use that during the sessions, there will be stations throughout the, the floor that you can use to refill. Um, so definitely factor that into your packing. Um, and then once you're on site, um, please engage with us on social media, share what you're experiencing. Uh, the hashtag for this is interactive 2023. And uh, we'd love to see everyone engaging on that. All right, Megan, we did it. We got through everything. Um, so we're going to move into some questions. It looks like we've got some that are coming in here. Uh, let's see. So Megan and I are going to take a quick look here and we will do this. All right. Somebody got into CVent. Pretty simple. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Um, is there a way to link our QR code to CVent once we sign up? Um, I, I guess you're turn in terms of signing up. Uh, I'm not sure if you mean for like registering for the event or for the um, one of the tours or the probably the, they probably mean like is it available in the app? So like that ah, gotcha. show up. In the so it's app. not available in the app. Um, so, but again, it is on your registration confirmation email. If anyone needs to have that reset to them again. Uh, we're happy to do that. Um, in fact, I'm going to just advance one more slide here so you can see how to contact us if you need to. Um, shoot a message over to e events at welcomingamerica.org. Uh, and again, we can easily resend your confirmation email if you would like. Um, parking. So yeah, there is parking. Um, so the Signia has um, valet parking. It's $26 a day. There are also various lots and spots right around that area there. Um, again, if you go to the FAQ page on the website, there is a section that speaks to those. Um, and it also has a hyperlink to Park SJ. Um, and that's where you can do a search uh, for the particular area there. And it'll tell you uh, everything that's available. And I think it even tells you like a specific lots or garages, how many slots are open. Um, so that's a, a great place to reference that. Um, Megan, thank you for sharing the temperatures there. 
Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Fernand, for asking that clarification. So on Friday, again, yes. So nothing is happening uh, past noon on Friday. So um, again, the agenda for Friday, uh, 8 o'clock breakfast, 9 a.m., uh, the um, featured plenary speaker. And then after that, we'll go into the um, last round of breakout sessions from 10.15 to 11.45. And then the conference is over. So nothing at this point uh, that is scheduled for Friday afternoon. So those of you that might be still working on travel arrangements, anything afternoon, um, you should be good to go. All right. There's a question in the um, Q&A. Is the film screening available only for conference attendees? Yes, uh, thank you for that. Uh, and unfortunately, yes, it is only for conference attendees. But again, um, if you are a, an attendee, um, go to uh, their exhibiting table uh, and they should be able to give you information where it can be accessed um, for those that aren't there on site. Um, I think there, there's some websites and there may be some other screenings uh, happening that are coming up soon after the, the interactive. All right, so looks like we got through all of the information here. Um, again, it was a lot, a lot of information coming at you, um, but I hope it's information that you're going to find helpful, um, especially for all of you that this is your first time coming to the interactive. Uh, I know it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, please find any of us from the Welcoming America staff, as well as the San Jose um, Partnership host committee. Um, you will see us all around. Um, please find us, say hello. We are here to help you. We want to make sure that you have a wonderful experience at this interactive. Um, this is a conference that I know really generates a lot of uh, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, and a lot of heart, and we want that to be the experience for everyone. So um, we are here to help you. Again, reach out to us uh, at the email on the screen or um, via the website there. Uh, we want to um, respond to you as, as we can. So please do that. We've got, again, 20 days, um, and then it'll be here before you know it. So we hope you found this all helpful. Um, appreciate you all joining again today. And again, reach out if you need anything. If not, we will see you very soon in San Jose. Thank you.